I think dancing is something that's very intimate act. You know, it's very clear that we can dance when we are alone. We don't need audience to dance. We don't need music to dance. <clears throat> we just need time and space, not even much space. You know, it's a little bit like singing or painting. Um, we do singing alone. We do make up melodies. We do make up uh, lyrics very easily. We can write something on a paper and make a drawing. And dancing is, is in a way, is that easy. Mm. And maybe even more easy because in order to draw, you need a piece of paper and you need something to draw with. In order to sing, you need a, you need a melody and you need maybe lyrics. In order to dance, you just need your body. You don't need anything, any elements, except for what you already have. For example, this new holy trinity that <laughs> that you um, shared with us in Gaga class. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it felt familiar in some ways from taking mm -hmm. class with you over the years. But at the same time, it felt fresh because it felt that there was a sense of digging into it in a very clearly articulated way and also with joy inside of it as a constant. Um, you want to talk about this new Holy Trinity shared with people? Well, um, in, in Gaga, we have few of them. Mm -hmm. There's not only one Holy Trinity. So one of the, what we call Holy Trinity in Gaga is a, is a, if it's three different forces that uh, uh, behind the movement that we're doing. Uh, one will be my own will, you know, if I, if I lift my hand to my face, I want to touch my forehead and I make a decision I'm touching my forehead. Then I can also imagine that I'm a puppet and I'm, my hand is being pulled to my forehead. It's being pulled by, or there is a strong wind that push my hand or, yeah, so it's for, an, a force from the outside that takes my hand to my forehead. And then there is the inner force, but it's also involuntary and I sometimes compare like an example as a hiccup. <laughs> you know, hiccup is something that, that happened to us, but it's not voluntary. I'm lucky. I feel I'm lucky that I discover it as the main thing that I research, you know. And that I'm not just understanding it, but I'm also doing it, you know. Everything I just said, people can understand and maybe even repeat, but if they don't practice it, if they don't dance, it means nothing. Hmm. Understand what I said means nothing if you don't dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I was curious about that too. How do you, with all of your immense love for dance, keep it fresh with Gaga? And what is that updating process? For me, it's more about uh, constant discovery. Constant discovery. Maybe I can update you about what I discover, <laughs> but I'm not being updated. I keep discovering. Keep discovering. And I'm sharing my discovery with you. Mm -hmm. and, and so that makes you feel maybe being updated. Yeah. But for me, it's just ongoing research that is full of discoveries. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot about giving old ideas for better new ones. Mm -hmm. It's not that all our old ideas are bad but many of them uh, can be replaced on a daily basis sometimes. Um, and that's also because you, we don't have to hold on to our ideas. Uh, and it's also about the ability to laugh at ourselves, uh, how lightness is a virtue. Uh, so those ideas I'm talking about, even though they're very meaningful to us, when a better idea comes, 
I can let go. It's just like choreographing too. You know, I can choreograph and work with you for a week on a section and then the following week it will just be erased from my work for something that I think is better. So that's what this sense of discovery and maybe being in the moment, right? Towards what comes up through you, um, through your discovery, what is learned and found, right? It's interesting. Um, I created this trio called Black Hole, which will have its like New York premiere at New York Live Arts in January. And because it's a trio, we're also playing with this idea of Trinity, but with likeness <laughs> um, between us and this sense of two Trinities, like one being the relationship between the three performers. So there's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and me as the Father, believe it or not, Ohad. <laughs> uh, and we have, like, yeah, <laughs> I'm growing up. Uh, and then Tashrik is the sort of prodigal son. And Marcella Lewis, who's a third performer, she's the Holy Spirit. And even having this sense of Trinity in that way, that's just about the space in relationship between us creates a huge uh, coloring of our, let's say, relate re the way we, we relate to one another. But we all know that it's also not about that, that it's mostly about this other trinity that is what is inside of us, what is between us, what is around us. And within that, we bring our colors and double distinctions towards that trinity. What is the, what is the correlation between, let's say, Gaga and, and your choreography? When you have a choreographic process, let's say. Well, Gaga is the movement language, is the research, mm -hmm. and uh, I work with dancers, you know, I choreograph with people, and the performance is all about the dancer's ability to, to translate my work, um, translate or interpret it, um, so it's hugely important what they offer, the narrative they offer. Um, I can be totally bored with my choreography and I can be moved to tears and it will, need, it will be because of the dancers. Mm. I can be bored because of the dancers, I can be so excited because of the dancers. Uh, so my, the work as a choreographer to help the dancers uh, is big part of my work as a choreographer. Mm. Um, big, big reason why I develop and continue to develop Gaga is to to share this research that helped them and helped me to translate uh, choreography in a way that can create. Uh, um, you know, a dancer, a dancer can create sublime moment. It doesn't matter what choreography is doing. And this is what I'm interesting, interested a lot in this ability. Would you give me any sort of advice as I step into this role too of artistic director of a collective? Like what would be your advice to me? Mm. One advice. And never, never abuse your power. Mm. Um, use the power of convincing. Mm. You need to convince. And you need to listen. Uh, You need to live by example. Mm. Um, and learn from your mistakes, because you will make many. Mm. 
That's great. Try not to, try not to repeat the mistakes. <laughs> yeah, find new mistakes, new habits. That's such great advice, you know. With Tribe, we call out, we call each other collective, not a company. Um, because mostly, although I'm in a leadership role, I'm not having any followers. We're all sort of walking next to each other, hand in hand. Um, and each person has their own set of skills and personalities and areas of expertise, right, that we bring towards the collective. And that creates the totality of the work that we do and the organization that we're trying to build. So it's almost like a rock band. It's like we come together when we have something to play. And if we don't have something to play, we don't come together. <laughs> because then we won't be at our best if it's not coming from, um, you know, this shared interests and communal act um, and i think maybe that's also a relationship to this sense of burnout maybe that I'm wondering if the burnout is from working towards a structure and building infrastructure or working on the work you know and being with the people that mm -hmm. make you feel best at the work How long is you have the the company? Yeah. How long do you have it? Yeah, we formally we legally formed in December 2019. So mm -hmm. it's been almost two years, but our first year of operations was 2020, which is the year that the world halted, stopped, paused due to the pandemic. But we mm -hmm. managed during that time to take our time um, and to reassess where we would where we are where the world is, where we would like to go, um, and to make better decisions, even from the beginning, you know, of how to take care of the art that we create and how to take care of the people who help to create it and how to build relationships with foundations, organizations, patrons, donors that have an interest in this new model of sorts um, to, to come towards supporting us in that way. So it's been really uh, wavy, you know, like wild and turbulent um, to, you know, start something during a pandemic, uh, but things are going well. Um, and I think it's a lot because of, like you said, finding, um, using tools to make people feel that they're at their best. And I hope that my collaborators feel that because I feel at my best next to them. Mm -hmm. One of the things too that happened in 2020 um, that was kind of a huge meaningful moment for me and for Tribe was that, you know, I was awarded this Guggenheim Fellowship, um, mm -hmm. which helped a lot during a time where there was no work and no income. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember when I shared the news with you, you sent me a very, short, efficient, but heartwarming message. Uh, what was it? Can I share it? <laughs> I, I'm curious. I don't remember. Yeah. You just said, very happy for you and the world. Love, Ohad. I know you for many years. And the more I know, the more I like. Thanks for taking this time. To be My here. pleasure, Shamel. And uh, good I, luck with everything. Thank you. And if you need something, don't hesitate. I won't. All right. Thank you. Love you. Love you too. Bye, Shamir. Bye bye.